Hello, dear friends of Philip von Rosen Gallery. Changes and a somewhat experimental variety are defining characteristics for Kuhn van den Broek's oeuvre, as we can see when we look back over the work of the last 24 years. However, last summer he went through a process of rethinking his painting that was so substantial that we can talk about a truly disruptive transformation. In our many talks he did not intend to tell me how exactly and why this happened, but he revealed that it came about when he was staying for a longer period in his studio on Jeju Island in South Korea last summer. He stayed there alone, without any distracting company, and thus he had plenty of time to think about his painterly practice and what he had achieved up to now. This lonely stay took place at a time when he could look back to 24 years of painting and when he could look forward to a very large comprehensive monograph, Out of Place, written and edited by John Welshman, the well-known British art critic who lives in Los Angeles. And he could as well look forward to his first comprehensive solo exhibition, Off-Road, in a German museum. It was about to be inaugurated in October 2023 in the Kunstmuseum Magdeburg. After it had been shown in Magdeburg, it is now on view in the Ludwig Museum in Koblenz. You can see it until April 21. So, some achievements had been made and obviously Kuhn van den Broek was looking for a change. He decided to stop basing his paintings on photographs, a strategy that he had employed for very many of his works for a very long time. And he also decided to not work any longer with oil on canvas, but chose instead street marking paint and tar for his paintings. You see the very first painting that came about through this new techniques behind me, Firmini No. 1. The blue and red paint, a very reduced palette, had been applied with a little trolley, as it is used also by workers for applying the street markings on the street. And we even see traces of the trolley's wheels, with which Kuhn had been going over the unprimed raw canvas. One black line and a patch are added with bitumen, commonly known as tar, in the upper right corner. The image, and it is still an image of a street and a space that seems to be leading towards a background, is constructed by only very few, indeed it is only three lines. While the work reminds us of an earlier painting from 2006, Solution, that shows even less elements, that is, two forms that clearly show fragments of street borders on a more or less homogeneously colored ground, with a black line that is cutting diagonally through a part of the canvas, Firmini No. 1 is featuring one decisive element of Van den Broek's paintings. The diagonal line serves as a signifier for the three-dimensional space that is depicted. The second and third works that Van den Broek did after he had returned from Korea were Broken Road No. 1 and No. 2, two paintings that show as the most striking feature yellow diagonal lines crossing the whole canvas from the bottom to the top. The lines have been placed over an organic structure of black lines that we know from Van den Broek's paintings of street surfaces with cracks. Over the years, he had been painting more or less realistic and more painterly versions of these cracks. The thick and broad tar, with which in some cases the companies that take care for the roads close the cracks, resulted in broad lines and earlier paintings and such lines can be found in the two broken road paintings too. It is obvious that the black lines and patches of black color have been applied first as a structure that creates the keynote of the painting. And only after that, the yellow lines have been added. 
The street marking color does not allow to be mixed and thus changed. Yellow is yellow as red is red and so forth. And it does not mix with the tar either. So we see the yellow lines crossing the tar structure and laying on and over it. While the diagonal lines clearly define the pictorial space, the black structures remind us of all over structures that we know from Jackson Pollock's famous drippings. And they do remind us, in some cases, like for instance in Broken Road number two and four, of calligraphy, the Asian art of writing. It is certainly not that Vandenburg intended this effect, but it is there, as a feature of the paintings that has been seen over the course of the last weeks by several of the visitors of the show. After the two Broken Road paintings on prime canvas, followed with Frimini number two, a next painting on raw canvas. I'm recounting the sequence because I want to stress that the decision to change his way of painting ended in an openness to experiment and not in a strategic way of working off one field, curvy lines on unprimed canvas, followed by another field, cracks and diagonal lines on prime canvas, etc. Again, Firmini number two is a very reduced painting with more or less four elements on the raw canvas. And we can see three more characteristics to which I would like to draw your attention. There is the, at some points, thickening yellow line that had been applied with the help of the trolley. I guess that a worker that had ex executed such a line on a street would have been fired because the line is not homogeneous as it has to be in real life on the street. That shows how Vandenbroek's new way of painting is also a deliberate way of giving up total control, which he had in earlier times when he was working in oil on canvas. There is also the fat blue color material in the lower part of the blue stripe that shows us how vicious, gummy and sticky the new material is. Painting here is about the process of applying the material, about allowing mistakes and about coincidences, or as the artist himself coined it, accidents. There is, however, a green line bent in the upper right corner that seems to define a horizon, or as we know it from paintings such as Dante's view number two from our first Vandenbroek exhibition 18 years ago in May 2006, or the edge number two from 2009, a parking lot. And we see below the green horizontal line a curved black line that could, but not necessarily does, delineate a seagull, as probably many of us have drawn them in drawn or painted childhood landscapes. As a seagull, the bird is hovering over the parking lot, and as an abstract black line, it creates an accent for the painting's two-dimensional composition and serves as a counterpart to the dominant vertical lines in blue and yellow. An illusionary effect can also be seen in the painting Firmini No. 7. While the street mark, because of the two awkward bends it is having, seems to be pretty far away from reality, the black and white line in the upper right corner not only defines the spatiality of the composition, as I had described before, but also shows us something that we can read as a shadow of the line. And this, the shadow, is an element that had been very important in earlier works by Vandenburg. I have been talking about the paint material that Vandenbroek is using when he paints in colors or in white. He acquires these paints in ordinary supply stores for such paint and not in art supply stores and he's thus forced to make do with what he can get. As you can see in South Park number two, the palette is even including a bright violet and is obviously not reduced to the colors red and blue, yellow and green. However, since mixing the colors is not possible, the amount of hues is very much reduced. There is not the same endless variety given as it is with oil, where pigments can be mixed at will. And also, the sticky quality of the paint leads to relief-like patches of color, sometimes even several centimeters thick. 
three smallish works in our show that are characterized by showing these intense, almost sculptural patches of color, green instrument, blue instrument and red instrument, are closely related to the largest work in our show, King, that has a central red, thick and very material base for the blue column that we see in the center of the canvas. As we had been told by the artist, the canvases for the instrument paintings had been laying side by side with or on the canvas of King when they had been painted. While especially red instrument reminds us of paintings by the American artist Adolf Gottlieb and the Belgian painter Bram Bogart, the work certainly has not been created with these historic positions in mind. It just shows how some forms we encounter in history pop up in our presence too. That proves once again that Van den Broek is an artist who is deeply rooted in the history of art as he had shown in numerous works before, where one can see connections to, for instance, Henri Matisse. On the other side, he is totally contemporary and himself. The painting King itself has a statuary quality to it that is amazing. Basically, three vertical lines, plus some extra green, form the simple composition. But even though, or because, it is a simple composition, it does not mean that the experience of this painting is easy or simple. It is rather overwhelming, with a power like a totem. Let me finish with one more feature, which is in particular visible in the two paintings, South Park 1 and 2. I'm talking about the splattered colors that do resemble the drippings we know from Jackson Pollock. While the cracks in the broken border paintings that I had mentioned before are painted in large lines and thus give the feeling that the all-over structure has been created step by step by applying the paint somewhat meticulously, the thin splatters are, I guess, and the artist does not reveal all of his secrets, the result of a rather intuitive sprinkling of color. But even if that is the case, they have been applied very consciously, driven by a clear will to compose. And if we look at the very thin lines in green and red that can be seen in South Park 1, it becomes obvious that the artist does not give away all kinds of control, but is rather at home in both worlds. These thin lines, as well as the other totally rectilinear lines, cannot be applied without a ruler or a board that serves as a ruler, and thus they are applied with absolute control. If you are interested to see this exhibition, you have to hurry up because it only runs through April 6. On April 6, the day of the finissage, we were able to organize an artist talk between Kai Heimer, the curator of Duisburg's Museum Küppersmühle, and Kuhn van den Broek. Please go to the news section of our webpage for more detailed information. And if you are interested to see what Kuhn van den Broek did until summer last year, you should try to visit his exhibition in the Ludwig Museum in Koblenz, which goes through April 21. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.